Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending the Layer 8 training webinar on Veeam new and important features. My name is Oren Kalb. I'll be running you guys through this webinar and talking to you a little bit about some of the features and functionality that really make Veeam stand out. Just to give you a little idea of my background, I'm a Veeam certified instructor. I have been teaching Veeam for actually as long as Veeam has been available in the U.S. to be taught. Um, I was one of the early instructors. I've been teaching Veeam for about five years now. I'm also a VMware certified instructor, a Trend Micro certified instructor. I do a lot of consulting projects. Uh, as well as training, but I've been in the training industry for over 25 years at this point. So, as far as what we're going to talk about here, in this presentation, our plan is to look at some of the most important functionality available in Veeam Backup and Replication version 10. Some of these are going to be covering new features, some are features that have been available in the product for years, some of which aren't even very well known and a lot of people don't use simply because they don't realize they're available in the product. So let's go ahead and take a look. So first of all, this is all about what can Veeam protect. In the early days of Veeam, when the product was first released, it was designed for VMware virtual environments. And using Veeam, we could back up and replicate and protect virtual machines running on our vSphere platform. Over the years, they introduced support for other backups. So now from the hypervisor side of things, we can back up virtual machines running in VMware, running on Hyper-V, and running on Acropolis hypervisor. Then they also talk a little bit about, or we're going to talk a little bit about the Veeam agents. This is something that was added in slowly over the last few years. Originally, again, Veeam was designed to be a product for backing up virtual machines. And there wasn't really a whole lot of support for physical environments. But over the years, as more and more people started looking at cloud hosting platforms like AWS and Azure, this became an issue because in order for us to back up virtual environments, we have, ac we have to have access to the underlying physical infrastructure that's hosting those virtual machines. When your virtual machines are running on a platform like AWS, we don't have access to that underlying hardware, to the hosts themselves. So for that and the ability to incorporate physical machine backups, Veeam has introduced agents that can be used on Windows and Linux machines. And those can be used on physical machines or virtual machines. Again, usually this would be used on virtual machines hosted by someone else where we can't access the hosts themselves. Also recently in version 10, one big new feature that was added into the product was the ability to back up file shares. So if you have either an SMB or an NFS file share, we now have the ability to directly back up those file shares. In older versions of Veeam, if you had a, a SIF share or, uh, sorry, an SMB share or an NFS share, we could back those up, but not directly. We would have to essentially mount those to another machine and then back them up as if they were local data on that other machine. Now we have the ability to incorporate backing up file shares directly, which also gives us much better functionality with regard to restoring file shares and the ability to easily restore individual files back to a file share and that sort of stuff. So that's a, a, a relatively new feature that was added into Veeam starting in version 10. So that's what we can back up. So what we can protect with Veeam. Now, some of the cool options with regard to backing up are designed to both make things more efficient and make essentially reduce the amount of space used for backups and 
reduce the amount of load placed on the production environment while the backups are running. So within Veeam, the main classification that I want to talk about with regard to the different types of backups is the concept of synthetic backups versus active backups. Active operations, the whole idea here is the data that is being backed up is coming from the production environment. So there we're putting load on the production environment. So when we do, let's say, an active full backup, we're taking production machines and backing those up directly from the production environment to our backup infrastructure. The idea of a synthetic operation is the idea that we can take existing backup data and reprocess that into a new backup. So to give you the simplest example of that, let's say we're doing weekly full backups and nightly incrementals. So our first full backup obviously has to be an active full backup because the data has to come from production the first time. Then we do our incremental backups each night. Those are also going to be active backups because we're taking the data from, produ from production that's changed every evening or every day, and we're backing that up using an incremental backup. But here's where synthetic comes into play. When we get to the second full backup, we already have last week's full backup, and we have the incremental backups from each night throughout the week. So if we configure our full backup to be a synthetic full backup rather than an active full backup, the idea is rather than re-backup everything from production in its current state, what we do is we take last week's full backup, we take the increments from each night throughout the week, and then we synthetically combine them on the back end backup storage to create a new full backup without having to put any load on the production environment during that process. We can also perform other types of synthetic backups. The synthetic full is just a simple example of how we can perform synthetic backups. In addition to that, though, we also have features like reverse incremental and forever forward incremental. Both of those are backup modes that regularly perform synthetic operations so that we can maintain a backup chain for as long as we need to without worrying about having to continuously do full backups to make sure that our backup chains are always safe. The idea is with, let's say, a forever forward, the idea is our first backup will be a full backup. Subsequent backups each night, we're just going to do incrementals, but the full backup moves forward a day each day, and the new incrementals get synthetically injected into the full from the previous day. So the idea is essentially we only ever need to create one full backup, and that backup just moves forward each day. So there's a lot less resource usage involved in that. On the production side, there's also a lot less disk space needed to store those backups simply because, again, we only need to have one full backup. It also may means that we will always maintain the exact number of restore points that we can that we configure on the backup job. When you do a traditional incremental backup without the synthetic operations, we're in most cases going to need at least two, if not more, full backups 
and then substantially more increments than what we actually want to keep for the job because an entire chain is always linked back to the full backup. When we do our synthetic backups, be them forever forward incremental or reverse incremental backups, the idea is we only ever need one full backup at the beginning of the, the first time the job runs, and then from then on each night, we are only backing up changes, but as I mentioned, the full backup keeps moving forward each day. So that's the idea of synthetic versus active, full, active backups. Now, there are some obvious considerations with that, by performing synthetic operations, we can take quite a bit of load off of the production environment. The other side of that, though, is it means we need backup storage that has sufficient performance to be able to process those synthetic operations. So that is an important con consideration when you're deciding whether you want to go with active or synthetic operations. So the other thing that we mention here is an additional feature in Veeam called the backup copy job. Backup copy is an extremely important feature in the product because it gives us the ability to essentially do just what it sounds like, make copies of the backups. So the idea is our backups only need to run once on a machine. And then we can use that one backup that we've created to then create other copies of the backups. Those other copies can be on other storage in the same site, and we can use those backup copies for copying our backups offsite to give us our offsite storage for redundancy. With the backup copy job, one of the most important things to realize is that the backup copy doesn't have to have the same retention period that we configure on the initial backup. So this gives us the ability to use the backup copy jobs for our long-term archiving and our off-site storage and it also gives us the ability to optimize our backup storage performance. So the idea is, in order to perform the synthetic operations that I mentioned in the last slide, we said we needed sufficient backup performance. But high performance backup storage is obviously not cheap. So what we can do with the backup copy is we can do our initial backups to our high-speed, high-performance backup storage. But so that we don't have to waste too much of that and we don't have to purchase too much of that, we can keep just a small number of restore points on that high-speed, high-performance backup storage. Maybe we'll only keep a couple of days worth of restore points there. We can also then have the backup copy job copy our backups to less expensive, lower performance storage within the same site. And maybe there we'll keep a month's worth of restore points or however much you need to keep locally. So that can reduce our costs because we can do our longer term retention on lower cost storage. In addition, we can have multiple backup copies of the same backup. So again, in order to then have our off-site storage, we can run another backup copy job that copies the backups off-site to where we want to do our long-term archiving. And on our backup copy jobs, we also have the option to implement GFS, or grandfather, father, son retention policy. So the idea is we can use our off-site backup copy as a way to 
do our long-term archiving because on the backup copy, we can set our number of weeklies and monthlies and annuals that we need to retain for archival purposes, and that then all gets maintained in the off-site location. Now, it mentions here under backup copy that we have two options, immediate copy or periodic copy. The difference there is in periodic copy mode, which by the way was the only option available prior to Veeam 10, with periodic copy mode, the idea is the backup copy runs as a scheduled task. So whether it's nightly or however often you need to, you can have it run the backup copy job. The new option that was added in Veeam 10 is immediate copy. And then as soon as a backup appears in the primary location, it is immediately copied to the whatever other storage device, whether it's on-site or off-site that you choose. So the idea is we can either make this happen as a scheduled task to happen during off-peak hours or whenever we need it to run, or we can just simply configure it to say anything that appears in the backups, the primary backup storage should immediately be copied to the secondary backup storage. So those are just some of the ideas of the different backup modes available to us in Veeam. Just a brief introduction to some of the concepts there. Now, when it comes to recovering virtual machines, this is where Veeam has some pretty incredible functionality. One of the biggest things is a feature called instant recovery. Now, in order to understand instant recovery, we have to think for a minute about how we deal with storage on our Hyper-V or ESX hosts. Virtual machines are just files that are stored on data stores and accessed by the hosts. So what Veeam can do is it has a feature built into Veeam called vPower. And what vPower allows me to do is take a backup of a virtual machine in the Veeam native backup format and without having to restore it, I can mount the, fi the backup files directly to the host as a data store. And then the virtual machine can be powered on directly from the backup storage without having to take the time to do a restore first. So within literally seconds, a virtual machine can be in the process of booting up directly from the backup storage. So when you have a large virtual machine that you need to recover quickly, rather than having to do a full restore, which on a large machine can take quite a while to do, we don't need to spend the time doing the restore. I can drastically reduce my RTO by being able to just power on the virtual machine directly from the backup. Once it's up and running from the backup, then we have a choice of what to do from there. If this is just a temporary thing while you're fixing something in production, then we can leave it running from the backup storage as long as we need to until we can switch back to the production machine. But let's say this is something that we're restoring because the production machine is dead and we can't fix it. Well, in that case, once you instant recover the machine and it boots up from the backup storage, we can then do a migration from the backup data store to a production data store. And that migration can be done hot while the virtual machine is running. So the idea is instant recovery is able to boot the machine up quickly directly from the backup 
once it's up and running, from there, we can hot migrate it to production storage, and now we've restored the virtual machine, essentially, without having to spend all the time with that machine being down while we do a traditional restore. Some other interesting new functionality that was added in starting in Veeam 10 is the ability to instant recover across platforms. In earlier versions, instant recovery only worked within a platform. So I could instant recover VMware vSphere VM backups to vSphere hosts. I could recover Hyper-V backups to Hyper-V hosts. And that was pretty much it. Now with instant recovery, if your host is VMware that you're doing the recovery to, I can recover vSphere virtual machines, Hyper-V virtual machines, Nutanix AHV virtual machines, backups that were created with the agents, which we'll talk more about in just a minute, and then even Amazon EC2 instances, those can all be recovered to vSphere hosts using the instant recovery feature. Now, if what we're recovering to is a Hyper-V host, we don't have as much flexibility. We can recover Hyper-V VMs to Hyper-V hosts, Nutanix AHV VMs to Hyper-V hosts, and agent backups. But notice, I cannot recover VMware VM backups to Hyper-V hosts, but I can recover Hyper-V VM backups to vSphere hosts. So just keep that in mind. But this is all new as far as the restore functionality, the instant recovery functionality. Again, prior to Veeam 10, we were limited to only recovering within the same platform that the backup was created in. That all changed in version 10. So, in addition to instant recovery, we still have the traditional recovery options. So here we can do a full virtual machine recovery. Now, when you do a full virtual machine recovery, we have a couple of interesting options here. We can restore the virtual machine to the original location that it was backed up from. Now, in that case, the original virtual machine can't still be in the original location. If it is, we'll actually delete it before doing the restore. We also have the option to restore it to a new location with different settings. But down at the bottom, there's another interesting option called Quick Rollback. If you wanted to do a full virtual machine restore, but you don't want to delete the machine and restore the entire thing, we can do a quick rollback. And essentially, a quick rollback you can think of as an incremental restore. The same way we do incremental backups where we back up just what's changed from the previous version, with quick rollback, we are just restoring whatever's necessary to get the machine back to the exact state of the restore point we choose. So the idea is by using the quick rollback feature, we are doing a full virtual machine restore, but we don't have to spend the time and resources restoring all of the blocks. We only need to restore the blocks to get the machine back to the state of that restore point that we choose to restore from. Now, there's also another option here called Staged Restore. Staged Restore is also a pretty cool feature in certain situations. If you have a scenario where we need to restore a virtual machine, but before putting that restore into production, changes need to be made to the machine, we can use the staged restore. So to give you a simple example of that, let's say you have some sort of regulatory compliance requirement where certain legacy data needs to be removed from a database before that can be put into production because it has some sort of confidential information on it that needs to be removed. 
with the staged restore, what we do is essentially create a script that will remove whatever data we need to be removed. We can then configure that script in the staged restore. And the VM will get restored temporarily to an isolated location. We'll talk more about that isolated location in just a few minutes. Once it's restored to the isolated location, actually I shouldn't say restored, it instant recovers it to that isolated location. The script is then run on the machine that modifies whatever data we need modified, and then the machine is moved to the production environment, and that entire process is automated by Veeam, and we can automate that on multiple machines concurrently. So that's the whole idea of the staged restore. It allows us to make changes to the machine while it's being restored. Now, the last of the recovery, so we had instant recovery, we had full recovery. The last of the recovery options for us now, relating to machines, is called a bare metal recovery. And this is used when you have machines that were backed up using the agents, so let's say physical machines, or again, cloud-hosted virtual machines, we can do a bare metal recovery to a brand new machine. This is extremely useful if you are using the agent to back up physical servers and you have a physical hardware failure, rather than having to repair or replace that physical hardware, we can do a bare metal recovery from a physical agent-based backup directly to a VMware or Hyper-V virtual machine. So rather than have to wait for new hardware to come in or repair the hardware, we can take the backup that was made from an agent and restore it directly to a virtual machine. In the agent backup, we have the ability to create bare metal recovery media. So that's going to be a boot disk that can be used to boot up whatever machine you're trying to do the bare metal recovery to. Again, that could be a virtual or a physical machine. It can load the necessary network drivers, connect to wherever the backup of that machine is being stored, uh, and then do a bare metal restore back to the new machine and boot up the operating system. So that's the idea of bare metal restores. And bare metal restores can be done from agent backups, again, to hardware or to vSphere or Hyper-V virtual machines. So that's full virtual machine restores, whether it's an instant recovery or a full virtual machine recovery or a bare metal recovery, all of those options have one thing in common. We're restoring the virtual machine or the machine itself. We also have guest object restore functionality. So even though we're doing image level backups of the machines that we're backing up, using the guest object recovery options, we can actually restore things from inside the guest operating system of the virtual machine. Now, there's a couple of different options for how we can do this. If you're using one of the more commonly used applications, and they list the five applications here, Exchange, SharePoint, Active Directory, SQL, and Oracle. If you're using one of those five applications, Veeam has something called the Explorers for these applications. The Explorers are essentially application-specific restore tools. So even though we did an image level backup of say the Exchange server, the Explorer for Exchange allows me to mount the backup in the Explorer 
and actually visualize the entire directory structure of the Exchange server. I can see mailboxes, mailbox contents. I can drill down to individual mail messages or individual, individual calendar items. And then we can restore those individual items. So we can browse the backup, we can search the backup, and then we can restore those items either back to the original production server, or we can restore them to an email message that we can send to the user. We we can restore them to a PST file that can then be imported. So the idea of the application explorers, again, allows me to do application object restores even though we've done an image level backup of the virtual machine. Some of the explorers, like the ones for Exchange and Active Directory, even have the ability to do a quick comparison against the state of the backup to the state of the current production instance of the machine and quickly show me any differences. So just to give you an example, you could back up an ex uh, let's say we back up a domain controller and then mount the backup of the Active Directory domain controller using the Explorer for Active Directory. Then let's say we go into the production domain controller and do something like remove a user from a group. I can then tell the Explorer for Active Directory to compare the current state of the production machine against the backup, tell me what's different, and it will immediately pop up and show me this user was a member of this group in the backup, they're not a member of this group in production, and then I can just tell it restore the object and the user's put right back into the group. So those are the types of things that the explorers can do. Again, they are application specific restore tools. Now, the explorers for SQL and Oracle take things a step further because not only can I restore the SQL and Oracle servers or databases or even individual tables with regard to SQL, but we also have the ability to do a point in time restore. When we back up our SQL or Oracle database servers, in addition to the regularly scheduled backups of the servers, Veeam can periodically back up the logs from the SQL or Oracle servers. So the idea is, let's say we're only doing backups nightly at 11 p.m. Let's say at 10 o'clock this morning, the SQL server, one of the databases got corrupted. The problem, of course, is traditionally, I could only restore it to the state it was in at the backup last night at 11 p.m. But since we've been backing up the logs periodically, we can do a point in time restore to just before that corruption occurred. And essentially, the way that it works is it first uses the backup from last night, it restores the machine to the state of the backup last night, then it takes all the logs that we've been backing up since last night, and Veeam has a feature called Log Replay. And Log Replay does exactly that. It replays all of the events from the logs to repopulate everything back into the database, again, to get it to the exact state that we need it to be in at the exact point in time just before that corruption in the database occurred. So the Explorers for SQL and the Explorers for Oracle both give us the ability to do those point in time restores, provided that when you set up the backup jobs in the first place, you configured it to periodically back up the SQL and Oracle logs. Now, the other thing they mentioned here, so that's, those five explorers are great if you're using one of those five applications. The other thing they mentioned here is the instant file level restore tool. Now, that 
is essentially, if we really think about it, it's basically an explorer just like we had for the applications, but in it, it's an explorer for the file system. And this supports all of the most commonly used Windows and Linux file systems. So this essentially allows me to browse or search the file system from a backup of a virtual machine without having to first restore the whole VM. I just mount the backup. I can then browse or search the file system for whatever individual guest files that I need to restore, and then just restore those individual files. And I can either restore them back to the original location that they were backed up from, or I can restore them to a completely different location. So again, if you think about the file level recovery tool, it's essentially an explorer for the file system the same way the other explorers are explorers for individual applications. And again, it supports all of the most commonly used file systems. Now, there is another option where if, let's say, you did have an application that you needed to restore something from, and it wasn't one of the applications that we have an explorer for. Well, there is another system that we can use. Some of the things, the parts of this we're going to talk about in just a couple of minutes, but essentially, remember we just mentioned the instant recovery, the idea that we can power on a virtual machine directly from the backup? Well, we have another feature in Veeam that lets me do that to restore objects. I can use the instant recovery feature, power on the virtual machine directly from the backup in an isolated network environment where I can then take whatever it is that I need to restore and move it from the backup version of the machine to the production version of the machine using a proxy appliance that Veeam creates on the isolated network to allow connectivity to the production network. So again, if the application that we want to restore from has an explorer, that is the easiest way to do it. If it's just individual files, then the instant file level tool is an easy option. But again, if you have an application that's not supported or files that aren't on a standard, a standard file system that we support, then we can use the option to boot the machine up directly from the backup in the isolated environment and transfer whatever we need to the production environment from there. So that's guest object recovery. So again, here we're not talking about restoring the virtual machines themselves. We're talking about restoring the things from inside the virtual machines. Now, replication. So, so far we've talked about backups, but this product isn't called Veeam Backup. The product is called Veeam Backup and Replication. The replication functionality allows me to replicate virtual machines from one host to another. Now, this is completely independent of the type of storage you have because it's Veeam that's doing the replication and it's going from one host to another host. So it doesn't have to have storage that has the ability to do replication at the storage level. This is just happening at the host level, make, copying the virtual machine from one host to another. Now, replicas are virtual machines. They're not backups of virtual machines. They're virtual machines. They can be powered on at any time. The replicas can be used on site for redundancy. So we have another copy of the machine on another host that can instantly be powered on if we need it. But more commonly, replication is used for off site. This is one of the ways we can accomplish disaster recovery with Veeam by replicating our virtual machines to hosts 
in another location, we have those machines available to be powered on if we need to. Using Veeam Orchestrator, we can fully orchestrate single-click DR failover. Now, when it comes to replication off-site, one of the biggest problems that we have to deal with is bandwidth. Now, with replication, only the first time we replicate do we need to replicate the entire virtual machine. Subsequent replication runs, it only replicates whatever's changed. It's just doing incremental replication. So our biggest concern is the initial replication bandwidth. If I have to replicate a whole bunch of virtual machines to another location, that first replication instance is going to take quite a bit of time. So, Veeam gives us some options called seeding and mapping that allow us to either create a backup of the original virtual machine, manually take that backup to the DR site, import that and use that as the starting point for replication. Or we can do mapping where we can create a similar VM in the DR site, map it to a production VM, and the first replication instance just has to get those in sync. So again, th that's designed to reduce the initial replication bandwidth. In addition to that, Veeam also has its own proprietary WAN accelerator. And the WAN accelerator is used to reduce bandwidth across the WAN. And the WAN accelerator is used for two features in the product. One is what you see here, replication. So this can reduce our replication bandwidth by um, essentially using a cache of data blocks so that we don't need to transfer data blocks across the WAN if they already exist in the cache. The second feature that Veeam uses this WAN accelerator for is the backup copy feature that I mentioned earlier. When we want to copy our backups across the WAN to an off-site location, the WAN accelerator can be used to reduce bandwidth. So that is a native WAN accelerator feature in Veeam, rather than having to use third-party products for that. Now, this is a feature that is an important one to understand for a lot of reasons. But one thing we need to understand is this is not an extremely new feature. It's been around in Veeam for the last couple of versions, but there were some substantial changes and improvements made. So let's first talk about the basic concept. This is called Scale Out Backup Repository. And to put it in its simplest form, what Scale Out Repository allows me to do is take multiple backup repositories and combine them into a single logical repository. What I mean by that is I can take multiple storage devices and combine them into one repository. In, before we had that functionality, with Veeam, it was difficult when we had multiple repositories because I had to manage which jobs go to which repositories and which jobs get stored where. With Scale Out Repository, we combine them all into a single logical repository, and then I configure my jobs to go to the Scale Out Repository, and Veeam, using several different algorithms that we can choose from, will determine where to actually store the data. So we don't have to deal with managing all of these individual repositories. Now, that was the idea of Scale-Out Repository, and that's the way it has worked for quite a few years now. But the big change came in version 10 when they gave us the ability to add in object storage. Our object storage can be Amazon S3, S3 compatible, Azure Blob, or IBM Cloud Storage. Now, what's cool about the idea of adding in object storage is Veeam has the ability to automatically 
offload backups to the object storage. So the idea is, let's say you have Amazon S3 storage that you want to use for all of your archiving of your backups. Rather than keeping those on site, we want to get them off site into a cloud repository. Well, the scale out backup repository can be configured to store the initial backups locally on internal in-house storage but then it can be configured to automatically offload those backup chains as they become inactive to our object storage on something like Amazon S3. So the idea is we can keep stuff locally to make it quick and easy to restore, but when it reaches a certain age, it automatically gets offloaded to your object storage to free up space on your local storage, and that way we do all of our off-site archiving. Now, we can, I mentioned, have it set up to, to offload inactive change, so as they reach a certain age, they get offloaded to S3. But if you want to use this as just your secondary storage location and your, your off-site storage, then we can also configure it to copy everything as soon as it appears on the local repository, automatically copy it to our object storage. So adding in the object storage to the scale-out repository has given us a lot of additional functionality as far as long-term protection of our data. When it comes to object storage, we can also configure immutability on the object storage so that data can't be deleted or changed or overwritten for a predefined period of time. And that can also go a long way towards helping protect us from ransomware attacks because there's no way ransomware can affect files that are backed up in object storage com configured with immutability because we can't modify anything until that immutability period expires. So that's our scale out backup repository. Another cool feature, and this is actually something that's been around in the product for years, but it's not really very well known. Sure backup and sure replica. These are features that are designed for recoverability testing. These are able to verify for us that our backups and replicas are usable if we need them. Now, a lot of backup products have some sort of recoverability testing where they do something like a CRC check on the backups of the virtual machines or something to that effect. This takes that whole concept a whole lot further. Rather than just doing a CRC check to make sure the backup file isn't corrupted or anything like that, this uses that instant recovery feature that we talked about earlier and automates testing of your backups by actually powering them up directly from the backup using that vPower instant recovery feature. It powers them up into something we call the virtual lab, which is that isolated virtual network that I mentioned a little earlier. So the idea is the virtual lab starts up, the virtual machine is powered on directly from the backup, and then Veeam runs a series of tests against that backup to make or against that virtual machine to make sure it's actually working. And when I say it runs a series of tests, it runs a heartbeat test to make sure that the OS in the machine successfully booted up. It runs ping tests to make sure that network connectivity is available. And then it runs application specific tests to make sure that the application in that machine successfully started up. And Veeam has predefined application tests 
for most of the commonly used applications, and then they also have documentation available for how to create your own application tests if, they ha if you come across an application that they don't have a predefined test for. Now, this, is, this works for both my, app, my backups and my replicas. And then here we also mention application groups. The idea of the application group is sometimes the machine that you want to test, that you want to verify, requires other machines. It has dependencies on other machines in order for it to boot up successfully for us to be able to test it. So we can create an application group of those other dependency virtual machines and then it will use, it will first boot up the machines in the application group, then boot up the machine we want to test, all in that same isolated network. So to give you a simple example, if I wanted to run a test on an Exchange server, I can't boot up an Exchange server if it doesn't have a domain controller to talk to. The Exchange services won't start. So then my, my application test for Exchange is going to fail. But if I create an application group that has a domain controller, first it will boot up the domain controller in the isolated network, then it boots up the Exchange server, now the Exchange services can start, and then we're able to verify that Exchange is up and running. So that's the idea of Sure Backup and Sure Replica. Rather than just do a check to make sure the backup file isn't corrupted, we're actually powering on the virtual machines from the backup, making sure that they boot up, making sure the applications start, and then in the end it generates a report on the status of that Sure Backup or Sure Replica test. So now we're really testing that these machines, not just the backup is okay, but that the machine is fully recoverable if need be. And then the last thing that I want to talk about here is a brief introduction to Enterprise Manager. Enterprise Manager is an additional component that's part of the Veeam Availability Suite. And essentially, it is a web-based administrative tool for Veeam. It allows us to manage jobs, edit jobs, look at the status of jobs and things like that all through a web interface. Now, there are two big things that this does for us. One of them is it allows us to federate together management of multiple Veeam deployments into a single pane of glass for management. So the idea is if I have multiple Veeam servers in my environment, multiple Veeam deployments, I can use one enterprise manager server and manage all of them from a single interface, from a single web browser. That's the first thing. So it allows me to centralize management across multiple deployments. The other thing that's really cool with Enterprise Manager is it allows you to do restores through Enterprise Manager. But it also allows us to do very granular delegated restore rights. So I can give other people the ability to do restores. And I put two examples here. The first one, Help Desk. Let's say you want to allow the Help Desk to be able to do basic user restores without having to escalate this to the backup team. Well, using Enterprise Manager, if a user calls and says, I just deleted this really important file and I need it restored, a Help Desk user, without having to really know or understand anything about how Veeam works, can literally log into the Enterprise Manager console with a browser and then just search for whatever file the user needs restored and then do a single click restore and just restore that file for the user. They don't even need to necessarily know what server that file was backed up on, where it exists or anything like that. They can literally search for it by name and just do a restore without having to know anything else about Veeam. 
The other one I mentioned here is DBAs. Let's say you wanted to start allowing DBAs to do their own database restores. Well, using the permissioning in Enterprise Manager, we can restrict it to just the database servers, and then they can log in through a browser, and again, without having to know or understand really anything about how Veeam works, they can do their database restores. So that's the idea of Enterprise Manager. It federates together management across multiple Veeam deployments, and it gives us the ability to delegate restore rights to others without necessarily having to teach them everything about how Veeam works. So that's our presentation. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, there is an email address located here on this screen. Feel free to send an email or give a call anytime. I hope that had some useful information to you. Have a great day.